Hello Steelers and welcome to this tryout uh, and my first or well second play of What a Tanker. I bought this just a little while back, it's the Two Fat Lardies rules for one-on-one -on -one tank games. It's literally a knockabout uh, kind of beer and pretzels kind of game but it has a lot of the the uh, interesting mechanics in it that the Two Fat Lardies are well known for so lots of dice, activations, that kind of thing. And, uh, they basically get rid of all the I go, you go that you get in lots of old war games. It's been out since uh, 2018. I think it's quite a popular game. Uh, it's still available, obviously, on the Two Fat Lardies website. So if you want a copy of it, get yourself over there and buy one there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you really just a, a like I said, a tester game that I've played that I've just set up between a Churchill, Churchill Mark III, and a Hetzer uh, Panzer 38T. And they are they're, they're they're the same points in the game, but they're different enough to make it slightly interesting. So the Churchill is a slow tank, but it's got heavy armor, whereas the uh, the Panzer thirty eight T is a, a tank hunter, tank destroyer, should I say? Sorry, and also is small and fast. So quite a good balance there between the two of these different vehicles. So what we'll do is, uh, I'll show you the setup uh, that I've got for the board. I'm just using the same game table that I used for O Group uh, in a previous video, uh, which probably came out before this. Uh, so I'll, I'll not show you the board, I'll just show you some of the, the, the bits and pieces about Water Tanker rather than anything else. And we can go from there really, and I'll take you through the game, and I'll, I'll show you how it plays. I've literally played one game of this prior to this, so if I do make mistakes, I do apologise. Uh, if I make stupid tactical mistakes, I also apologise for that. Uh, I'm learning the game, and I just thought, as I'm learning the game, let's uh, let's learn it together but it's it's a good laugh from the one game that i've played so i'll get this big cat off the table and we'll crack on with what a tanker i should also say well i was actually um i was inspired by big lee's miniatures adventures because he'd reused a table he'd done a previous after action report on to play a water tanker game so i was kind of uh, i thought well since i've already got a table set up Let's try it out and see where we go. So thanks to Lee for that. If you don't follow his channel, uh, you don't subscribe, please do. Go on over, go and check it out. Uh, Big Lee's Miniature Adventures, or I think he's changed it to Miniature Adventures at this point. But go and check him out. Uh, he does some good uh, good videos, good, good talking points on wargaming in general. But anyway, uh, now these are the dashboards for each of the tanks. So we've got a Panzer 38T here the Hetzer, and then we've got the Churchill Mark III over here. And you can see what we've got is the attributes of the different tanks. So the Panzer 38 is, is small, it's fast, and it's a TD tank destroyer. It also has an armour of 6 and a strike of 7. So the armour is how much defence it has. The strike is how much power its gun has got when it hits. We've got command dice here, but we'll talk about those in a second. And then we've also got the Churchill Mark III, the name of the tank, and this is slow and it also has heavy armour. What this means is for the heavy armour is that it, uh, its flanks and its rear are much better protected than uh, other tanks. So if you do get behind it, it's still going to be quite hard to actually hit it, uh, do much damage to it. You've also got over here, we've got buttoned, acquired, aimed and loaded. These all play a part in the game. So if you're buttoned, uh, the tank starts unbuttoned, which means the commander is out of the the hatch at the moment you can go buttoned at the end of your turn quite easily but it just makes spotting another tank or acquiring another tank a lot harder acquired is if you spot another tank uh, so basically you put a token in there and i've got the tokens here from the two fat lardies so we've got uh, the the button itself for the buttons acquired for the acquired then also aimed you have to aim before you can fire you also have to be loaded as well before you fire so uh, once you've fired, you become unloaded, so you have to use a command dice up here to reload as well. So we start the, the start the game automatically loaded. There's always one in the pot, uh, but the rest are blank, and you can add to those. We've also got a, 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 a space here for any damage that is done to the tank. I got these dashboards from the Two Fat Lardies website. You can download them for free. I just printed them. And then I also laminated them as well, and I can draw on them with a dry wipe pen, so I can just reuse them anytime I want. Uh, so that's basically it. That's the setup. So what we start with is I've divided the colours basically. So the Germans are blue, the British are red. 
just so I can remember. And we start by rolling initiative. Literally, it's a roll off. Uh, you can use a command dice. Uh, we'll talk about this a wild dice to actually add one to your initiative on the next turn if you need it. But as we're starting, we're just going to roll. If you get a draw, you roll until one or the other wins. So let's see who wins. Okay, so blue's got a six, red has got a two. That means the Panzer 38 is getting the upper hand. So they've automatically got their, uh, they've automatically got uh, initiative here. So what we do for each, die, each tank when it's their turn is they roll their hand of command dice. Now these can get reduced through armor, uh, through damage, you know, say, but you start off with six each. So we roll these. And then we work out what we've got. So we've got two sixes, so they are wild dice. One is moving. A three is aiming. Uh, is this an aiming? One second. As I say, I will make mistakes on this. Uh, we've got a one, a three, a four, a five, and two sixes. Let me just tell you exactly what these dice are. So one is a drive dice. Two is an acquisition dice, but we don't have one, so I can't actually acquire a target at this point. Uh, as this stands. Uh, a 3 is the aim, a uh, 4 is to shoot, and then a 5 is to reload. So what I would need to be able to fire at a target that I haven't seen yet is an acquiring dice, and then I would aim at it, then I would fire at it, then I would probably reload as well. And then we also have these, the sixes, which are wild dice. Now we can change these around. Uh, I'm also a tank destroyer, the Panzer 38T is a tank destroyer, and it is also fast. So a tank destroyer can change any any of these dice into an aimed dice if it likes. However, there's not much point because we're miles away from the uh, from the the, the 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 targets at this point. Uh, but it can also change because it's fast. It can also change any dice into a one as well, so it can be a fast dice. So what I want it to do really is to move pretty quick and get close to the target as quick as possible using that fast. So I'm going to change a lot of my uh, a lot of these dice into ones. So we've already got one. So I'm going to change this six into a one as well. This six into a one. And then because I know that there's most likely I'm not going to be anywhere close enough to fire, I'm going to turn this five into a one as well. So that gives me four movement dice. Now I'll show you how the movement works. So my Panzer 38 is set up over here in this top left corner because I just rolled, uh, well I just decided to go on the basic scenario which is, the, I think it's called the long long ball and basically it's uh, your either end, ends of the long side of the table. As I said we've got, we've got uh, four movement dice to use up and each movement dice gives us 2d6 worth of movement. However, if you're crossing obstacles like fences, you have to use a movement dice. If it's a major obstacle like a bocage or a wall or something, then it would be two movement dice and you just basically pass to the other side. But I've got four at the moment, so what I'm going to try to do is try and get this Panther, uh, this uh, 38T as far forward as possible through this hedgerow. So the first one, we're on a nine. So it's nine inches forward to here. Our second dice. It's 12 inches, that's pretty good. So that's going to bring us right up to contact with that hedge. So our second, our third dice is going to be to cross that hedge, and then that brings me into contact with the second hedge. So the fourth dice is going to cross me over that hedge as well. Now it, you can move you can move anything up to 90 degrees as part of that move. If you want to move 90 degrees, it costs you a movement dice as well. You can also, if you've got a turret, you can also move your turret up to 60 degrees as well uh, to any particular direction as part of a move dice. So this could have moved its turret four times if it wanted to, or one time if there was a target close by. But that's basically the moves, that's how you do it. And then it is the Churchill's turn. And they were coming second in the initiative, so again, we roll the dice, we see what we got. We got a one, uh, we got two threes, oh, three threes and two fives. So that's a bit of a, a poor mix to be honest for the poor old Churchill there. Uh, so we've got a drive dice, we've got uh, three aim dice and then also uh, reload dice as well. 
Uh, the aim dice are useless without an acquisition. The reload is useless without firing, so it's only got to one. But because the tank is, oh, uh, it's only got one dice, it can really use this turn. But because the tank is slow anyway, it can actually only use a maximum of two of the drive dice. So whereas the 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 thirty eight T can basically zip around the board as much as it wants, as many white uh, one numbers ones it's got, uh, the Churchill is. Uh, basically uh, slow and steady but uh, you never know it might win the race but let's see uh, how far it gets with the movement so here's our Churchill in his starting position so I'm just going to roll to see how far he moves so he's only got a four inch move this turn so he's only up to here so not particularly good for him but there we are that's the way it works uh, obviously something got stuck in the tracks all right so we've got the first turnover so we can then jump back into the initiative. As I said before, if you've got wild dice, you can actually hold them over to use for initiative. So say that the Panther, uh, the Panzer 38 had decided to hold on to a, a 6, he gets a plus 1 on his blue dice. But neither of them have, because uh, he converted all of his 6s into 1s, if you remember. So we just roll straight dice again to see who gets the initiative. So let's have a look. So uh, this turn, the Churchill is top dog. So they've got 6 against 2. So they're going first. The more tanks you have, the more initiative you will be rolling until everybody has uh, got a place in the game. So with two tanks it's quite easy, but then obviously it gets a bit more, slightly more complex with more players and more tanks. But still relatively simple. So let's have a look. We've got two ones here. So that's the maximum drive dice that the Churchill can have anyway. Uh, it has a six, so it's got a wild dice. It's also got a three, a four and a five. Now as I said before, that's not uh, that's that's quite a good mix, though. Uh, if they were to convert the six into a two, but you don't have to do it immediately. You can do it at any time you want. He's got his maximum movement of two dice here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it first of all to see what position he's in, and then to see if he can try to at least acquire the Hetzer. As I said as well, well, one thing I forgot to mention is that they are both unbuttoned, which gives them a 180 degree uh, 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 spotting. Uh, if they're buttoned, you can only see 60 degrees forward of your of your turret, whichever way your turret is pointing. It's generally pointing forward when you start. Uh, you can button up at the end of the turn if you like, but obviously that's going to decrease your uh, the, the, the amount you can see. Uh, and also, it increases the amount of acquisition dice you have to spend on firing. However, if you're unbuttoned and you get hit, there's more, li more likelihood of you getting damaged as well because you've got your commander sticking out the top and he doesn't want to get his head taken off by a shell. Uh, but let's see what happens with this Churchill. And uh, I'll move it first of all, then we'll see what position we're in. We can decide what we want to do with that six, whether they might want to hold it over until next turn or if they want to convert it into maybe a, uh, an acquire acquisition dice. Okay, this is quite exciting. The Churchill has actually managed to be able to move uh, from his position up to around behind this wood and is able, he's got the the uh, 38T in his sights because he's got the 60 degree angle. What I've done here is I've just marked where he's moved his turret to so we know uh, that's just to show you really he's pointing that way uh, very silly from my point of view is I, I glued all my turrets down so they don't actually move so I've got to remember which point they're uh, at which which point they're they're, they're pointing uh, I might come back at some point and break them off and refix them but as it is it is what it is uh, so he's pointing this way so the uh, he's actually in uh, the target area of the turret so he's able to fire at the uh, Hetzer at this point. So what I've done is I've decided to convert that 6 into a 2. So he's acquired the uh, 38T. So he's gone from a 6 to a 2. This is a wild dice. So this is giving him a 6, a, a 2, a 3, a 4 and a 5. So he has to acquire the target and the, re the way he acquires the target is if he's out of his turret, if he's out, uh, not buttoned up, which he isn't, He's got 180 degree and he can also see automatically any tanks that are in the open. The Hetzer is not in the open and has a hedge in between. This is a minor obstacle. For every minor obstacle between the, the tank that is spotting and the target tank, you have to use a one acquisition dice. So if he was buttoned, he would also have to use a second dice as well to spot. So he would need two acquisition dice 
Whereas in this case, because he's unbuttoned, he only needs the one. So that's perfect for us. Then we need to aim. So what we have to do is we use these tokens here to say this is an acquisition token. So we put that onto the uh, the dashboard to show that we've acquired a target. We then use an aim uh, token. You can get these from the two fat lardies or use any you, you want. And we put that down on the aimed. If he moves away out of sight, uh, he is no longer acquired or aimed at, or outside of that 60 degree arc, he's no longer aimed at. Uh, as it is, the Churchill could fire. So now he goes on to his four, his four dice. So so far we used up the three dice here. Then we go on to the four dice. This is the actual firing dice. And then thankfully for the Churchill, he's also got that five dice. So not only can he fire, but he can then reload. So he can be ready in the next turn to fire immediately as well, should he need to. Unless the uh, the Panzer 38 obviously has a, has a vote in this. So what we need to do, first of all, we need to see if we've actually hit the target. And the first thing we do for hitting the target is we need, if it's less than 48 inches away, it needs a 6 or above on 2d6. He's small, so that makes it 1 harder, so it's actually 7 or above to hit on 2d6. So that's a relatively easy number to acquire, so we'll just roll to see if it... Now I've said that, you'll most likely miss, but let's have a look. Ah, double 1. <laughs> Perfect. A double one means that whatever you are doing, something has gone catastrophically wrong and your ten turn ends immediately. So that's it. He's basically done. Uh, he is unloaded and that's as far as the Churchill can do. So he's basically fired but something has gone wrong and he's stuck at that, at that position. Just to show you the Churchill's dashboard at this point, he's got his two movement dice then he's uh, converted into an aim dice, a choir dice, sorry. Then he uh, used his aim dice, then he fired. He fired and he rolled those double ones, so that ended his turn. That means he's unloaded, so we've taken the loaded marker off. Uh, he couldn't play his five dice because he couldn't reload because his turn ended, but he still acquired and he also aimed at the Panzer 38 as well. So we keep those in for now until the Panzer 38 decides to move. And as it's the Panzer 38's turn, I think he probably will decide to move. So let's just see what he gets for his command. <clears throat> so we've got two wild dice, so that's good for him. He's got a one, uh, he's got a three and two fours. So with this we have, again just to go through it, we've got a drive dice. Then we've also got an aim dice. Uh, we've got two fours with two shoots and then two sixes. So he is also unbuttoned as well, so he's he could easily acquire that Churchill if he were to move forward uh, beyond, uh, up to that hedge, he would then be able to acquire that Churchill quite easily because he wouldn't need that dice. Uh, but he wouldn't, he could, as a tank destroyer, he can swap any, any uh, of these into aim dice. But so in, interestingly, he has already got an aim dice, so if he moved forward to the edge of this hedge, uh, he'd be able to see over it, because he wouldn't be blocking him, so he would acquire the Churchill straight away, he would then be able to uh, aim, so that would then stick down the aim token, uh, and the acquisition token as well, and he's got two fires, so he could swap these sixes into reload, so he could fire, reload, fire, reload in one turn, so I think that is probably what he's going to do. So. We, well, well, we'll see if we can get to the edge of that hedge, first of all, with these one dice. So let's try that. So potentially the the 38T, as I say, wants to get to this hedge so it can fire at the Churchill uh, by acquiring it automatically because he's in the open, he's unbuttoned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to move it. If I can't get it to the edge of the hedge, then I can swap one of the sixes into a two to acquire the Churchill anyway, uh, because I need one dice at least, and I can also swap the other six into maybe a reload, so I can still probably fire twice. So let's just see what happens. A four. I don't think he's going to make it. No, he doesn't. Well, actually, I've got a choice. I can either move up to the hedge with the dice, or I can just turn it into an... I'm going to stick well here, I'm, and I'm going to turn this six into a two to acquire the uh, to acquire the Churchill. So we've acquired it. So as I say, it's not buttoned. So what I've done here is uh, I prefer to stay in the cover and make it harder for the Churchill to fire at the 38T than the other way around, really. 
let me just swap this camera angle just so uh, the sun is not shining so badly on things. All right, we're slightly better there. So we're then spending this three from our dice pool and that is going to go onto an aimed token. So he's now not only acquired, but he's also aimed at the Churchill and he still has that wild dice as well. So he can turn that into a five uh, and f use that to reload and fire again because once you're aimed and acquired you can fire as many times as you like uh, but you just have to do those two first of all so same again he's less than 48 inches away so we need a seven or above uh, it's just a straight seven or above because there's no uh, categories on the on the uh, Churchill so let's see 10 so he's hit with that first dice so he's now unloaded and has hit with that first strike so what we do is we take our strike dice and they roll however many of their strike dice is so seven for the Panzer 38C seven dice and we are firing against the Churchill side armor however the Churchill is a heavy tank so its side armor is basically the same as its front armor so what we need is fives and sixes uh, to to do any damage a 5 here is an ordinary hit, a 6 is a critical hit. So let's just roll these and see what we get. Uh, so we've got one, two fives, but no 6s. So that's two ordinary hits. Everything else, 1 to 4, is a no effect. So now we take the armour of the Churchill. And this has an armour of 9. So we convert that into 9 dice. And then that, uh, we roll these and they score... Fives and sixes are saves, so they're just basic saves. So let's have a look. We've got that was just uh, that was cocked. So we've got one, two, three, three fives, no sixes, and the rest are one to fours. So we've actually got more saves than hits. And if the number of saves exceeds the number of hits, then the shot has no effects, bouncing off harmlessly. So the first shot was ineffectual. However, we've got that six still. So we use that, turn that into a 5, we reload, the Panzer, Panzer reloads, and then we have one final 4, so we fire again. So we are now again unloaded, but he's firing again with a strike of 7. And there's our dice, so we need 6s and 5s, 5s and 6s. So there's one, there's another one. So we've got a 6 is a critical, a 5 is an ordinary hit. And let's see how many... The Sherman, the, not the Sherman, the Churchill saves against fives and sixes again, so it saves against one. So this is slightly different now. So the number of hits exceeds the number of saves by one or two, which it does, it exceeds it by one. So it's exceeded by one or two, it's exceeded by one, but we've got the same amount of critical and ordinary hits. So it's actually just a temporary damage. Temporary damage means that the tank loses one or more command dice depending on the amount of net hits. So we've got one net hit, so the Churchill loses one of its damage, uh, one of its dice uh, for the command roll next turn. You can use a wild dice, a six, to get that dice back into play for the next turn. So it's not permanent damage, but it is making it a lot harder for the Churchill to do anything. So that's basically firing. Uh, the at this stage, both are unbuttoned still. Uh, they both acquired each other, they're both aimed, so if neither of them move from where they are, uh, then or out of sight, then they will be able to fire again. So we now jump back to the initiative and see what happens there. So this is current state of play. We've got uh, the Panzer 38T is currently still unbuttoned. He's acquired the target, he is also aimed, however he's unloaded at this point. The Churchill is the same, he's unbuttoned, he's acquired and aimed. Oh, one thing I think I forgot, I should have added one dice for the damage, for the strike, for, for uh, hitting the Churchill unbuttoned, but never mind about that, as did say, we'll make mistakes. Uh, so, but because he was damaged, he's lost one dice, so this is put down here and kept down here until he can re-roll, uh, get a six and get it out. So let's just see who gets the initiative for the next turn. Uh, it's the Churchill. So let's have a look at what they get for their command dice. He's looking for a six to be able to draw that dice back. So he does have a 6, he's also got a 1, oh he's got two sixes and two 4s. Ooh this is a bit of a choice this because he he's in a position where he's 
he could then get off two shots but his dice would still be down because if he converts the sixes into fives he could then reload fire reload and fire so we could get two shots off and then he's still got that one dice so he, uh, so he could actually move out of the way of that Hetzer. So I think that's probably what he's going to do at this point. Yes, I had forgotten that if you're buttoned, you get an extra strike dice. However, both of these were unbuttoned and they didn't get an extra strike dice on each other, so it cancels itself out. But just remember that. These are currently unbuttoned still. So the Churchill is going to fire, as we said. Well, he's going to load first of all. So that's one dice, that's five. Then he's firing. So he needs, he's firing at a small target. Uh, so it's a minus one, so he needs a seven, so he needs an eight or above to hit. No, sorry, he needs a seven or above, because he needs a six to start and then a, uh, a seven for the small target. So he's had to actually hit him. He's hit the Panzer 38T. Uh, his strike is only five. This is a low-powered gun. So let's have a look. We've got a six, so that's one critical. And the armour, when he gets that extra strike dice, I did forget... Let's roll that. So a double six. So there you go. He's got two criticals. The armor on the Panzer 38T is six. So he's rolling fives and sixes to save against it. He's saved three. Uh, it doesn't matter that they got double six. So that's taken uh, three of theirs away. So that first shot has bounced off. So then he is going to a. Uh, well, he's he's unloaded. So he now he's loading with that, converting that six into a five. And then he's going to fire again with his final, so his, uh, his final shot. So he is now again unloaded. So he's firing six. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to see, see if he hits him first, haven't I? Seven or above. A four is a miss. So currently he's got. Uh, the only thing he wants to do now is reverse, and he can only reverse d6 inches. So he's going to reverse as far back as he can behind these trees. So a three. This takes him to here. His turret is still pointing that way. However, he is now out of line of sight, so he's not only aimed, has gone, and he's acquired, as has the 38T. The Churchill is also going to button up at this point because they're now in combat. Uh, he's not that crazy, uh, but that ends his turn. So as I say, current state of play, the Churchill is buttoned. Uh, he's unloaded, so he needs to load. He's still damaged. So one, one uh, dice is off. Uh, the Panzer is uh, also unloaded as well at this point. So it's over to him to roll his dice for his, his turn. So we've got two sixes. A one, a movement. A two, which is the acquire. And then two fives, which is reload. So first of all, he's going to spend a, a five to reload. So let's just get a shell in there. He's got that one. Uh, so he he can convert into aims, but he's also got these sixes as well. This is a bit of a tricky one, because he kind of wants to get up behind that Churchill if he can. So I'm probably going to do a lot of movement, to be honest. He's a fast tank, so he can convert any any vehicle, anyone, into a, into a dice, uh, into a movement dice. And he's also going to convert the two sixes into ones as well. So he's going to have four movement dice. Uh, the five, we're probably just going to ignore that at this point and might convert it into an aim dice. But let's get him moving. As I said, the plan is basically for him to try to get around the back of this wood and then hit this, the Churchill in the rear. So he's less than two inches away from that uh, hedge, so I'm just going to move him to it. That's one dice. He's going to cross the hedge because at least he can roll on two d6s too. He's going to cross the hedge, so that's his second dice. So he's now like this. And then I'm going to try to get him to come round the back of here. So we've got a nine. So that's got him to there. And then we've got another nine. So he can actually get to here. I'll put him a little bit further the back like that, but he's now pointing right at that juicy target of the rear of the Churchill. He's He's still unbuttoned, so he's automatically acquired the Churchill. And he can convert one of his dice, any of his dice, because he's a tank destroyer, into a three, which is an aim. 
So he's acquired, and now he's going to aim at the Churchill. So he's acquired and aimed and loaded and ready to fire. So uh, a bit of a tricky point this for the Churchill, but let's see who gets the initiative next turn. Uh, the Panzer 38 is hoping to, uh, as is the Churchill, but let's have a look. So as I said, this is a, this is how it looks at the moment. The Churchill is buttoned. Uh, the Panzer isn't buttoned uh, because I forgot to do it, so I'm going to uh, not allow myself to do it. However, he has acquired the Churchill. He is aimed at him, and he's also loaded as well. He's got one in in the in the round ready. Uh, the Churchill is still damaged with that damaged dice. If all of your damage, if all of your dice are reduced and and taken to be damaged, then it's game over anyway. You will abandon the tank. Uh, so let's see who gets the initiative. Neither of them are adding that wild dice for the extra plus one, so it's just a straight roll. Uh, two against four, Churchill gets the initiative. So let's see what he does with that. Uh, let's have a look, we've got a one, which is a move. Two, three twos, which is an acquisition, and then a three, which is an aim. Oh, uh, not brilliant, but... Probably be able to do something with this, I think. Right, the Churchill is going to move his uses one to move 90 degrees. He's keeping his turret pointing this way. I'll take that off because we know which way he's pointing. Uh, it's pointing towards the Hetzer at this point. So then he's able to, he's buttoned, so he needs to spend an acquisition dice anyway to actually acquire the target. So he has also acquired the target. And then he is also aiming with that three as well. So he's got another token there. But he's currently unloaded and in is in a little bit of a pickle I think at this point it depends on what the Hetzer gets for his his role right so Mr Hetzer let's just see what we get he is literally uh, locked and loaded and ready to go he needs as many fours and fives as he can get out of this so that's what he's going for let's have a look uh, we've got well he's got at least a four and a five he's got a three two threes and two sixes. So, what do you think he's going to do, ladies and gentlemen? He's going to fire, then reload, then fire, <laughs> then reload. Uh, and he also, as a fast tank, he can actually convert any dice into a one as well if he wanted to. Uh, currently, he's probably not going to, but uh, this is what he's going to do at this point. Just to mention, you saw that the Panther... Uh, Panzer has got two threes, so they're two aimed dice, so they look as though they're useless. However, he can use these, both of these, to reduce the to hit number by one uh, for each one he uses up. So he's going to do that on his dice to uh, ensure that he does actually hit. So it's going to be a minus two, to, uh, minus two on the hit, so he needs a five or above first of all, first shot. So that's a five, Ooh, that was close. So he's actually hit. Uh, he is unloaded now because of that. He's hitting into the flank of the Churchill, but because he's a Churchill, uh, he has the flank armor is the same as the front armor. But we have a strike dice of seven. The Churchill is buttoned, so there's no extra dice in there. So we just roll to see how many uh, hits and critical hits we get. Because he's hitting what is essentially the front armor of the Churchill, we need fives and sixes. So we've got one five. The Churchill has the armor of nine. So we roll those, and he's looking for fives and sixes. So he's two saves. So he's cancelled that first hit. So it bounces off. So using his next five, the Panther, uh, Panzer reloads, then fires again, using those two aim dice again. So another minus two, so five and above. Uh, so that's a 9, that's another hit. So his strike again is 7 against the Churchill's armour of 9. Let's have a look, so that's one critical and one normal hit. He really needs to get behind that Churchill if he's going to do any, any particular damage, really, I think. But let's just see, the Churchill itself might, might not save these. He saved two of them, so that's equal saves. Uh, the firer rolls a d6, and then if it's a 1 to a 5, the tank moves back immediately 1d6, the target tank. Otherwise, it's a command. If it's a 6, a command dice is taken off. So let's see what happens. A 2, so the Churchill retreats. 
two inches directly back so it takes him to there but that ends the turn and the Panzer 38 is still loaded because he had that extra five so he's not moved but it's loaded so he's still in a good position to keep firing at that Churchill right our Churchill is still <laughs> basically still unloaded uh, he's still damaged uh, and but he has acquired and he has and he is aimed at the Panther 38. So let's just see who gets the initiative. Uh, this time it's a Churchill, or well, Churchill again. Uh, so let's see what he does. He's looking for fives, fours, really, so he can fire at that head. So, uh, so he's got a one, which is move, a two, which is acquire, two threes, which is aim. And then a six. Uh, it's not a great amount, really. So what does he do? Does he does he put his foot down and try and get out of there, or does he use that six and turn it into a into a uh, a loaded? So he's ready to fire at least. Hmm. This is a tricky one. Mm, I'm not sure what to do with that. He could. No, he can't fire because he's not loaded. Well, I'll tell you what. The shots have bounced off and, he is his, and it is his frontal armour, so he's going to... No, in fact, what I'm going to do is, he's going to take that dice back in, uh, using that 6 with his wild dice, and then I think he's going to move as well. Uh, probably turn... Uh, just move back, I think, to get a, to get a little bit further away. All right, what the Churchill has done is just literally moved back a little bit further. Uh, so they're still acquired, they're still pointing at each other, but at least he's got his frontal armour there. The other option was to go up round the, the, the trees here, but I didn't want the Hetzer to come up behind him and then stick a, a shell up his backside. So he's basically trying to uh, use his armour as protection. So now we're going to see if the gamble has paid off. And the Panzer 38T is go. So we've got a 6. Uh, we have a 1. A two, so we've got a move, an aim, sorry, an acquire, two aims, and then a five, a reload. Uh, so that means he could then turn that six into a four, which is a shot. He could also move forward as well, and again try to get around that uh, that uh, tanks around to his rear. But first of all, we're going to fire and then reload. I think so. Doing the to hit, it's normally uh, a six. Minus two because he's got the two aim on. I forgot about that. It was uh, it should have been four last time, but he still hits anyway. So four and above two d six. Uh, nine. That is a hit. So he's hit the Churchill on the front with his strike. The Churchill is still buttoned. Strike of seven and nothing. But we also have to see if the Churchill. Uh, saves anything. If he saves more than one, yes he has. He's got a five and a six, so he saved more than one, so it just bounces off with no effect. And then he can use his five to reload uh, back up. So again, the Hetzer is still uh, fully armed. And I think he's going to try and move a little bit as well. Actually, No, I'm going to stick him where he is. He's in a good position at this point. Right, back onto it. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, 38T has decided to button up at the end of that turn, so he's fully acquired, aimed and loaded. The Churchill, on the other hand, is buttoned, acquired and aimed, but he's not loaded. So let's see who's got the initiative. Neither of them is spending that uh, extra wild dice. So this time it's the Panzer 38T who's got the initiative, so he's going first. And let's see what he gets. So we got uh, two ones, which is moves. Two fours, which are fires. A reload on the five and then also a six as well so what we're going to do here is because he's a tank destroyer he can convert any number to a aim so that's going to give him a plus one on the hit so he's going to do that and then he's also going to convert that five that six into another five so he can get two shots off and reload at the end of his turn as well so that's what he's going to do so firing again Right, so we are firing with a uh, plus one on it, so it's a, a five or above for the first shot. Uh, that's a nine, that's a hit. His strike is seven. Two, four, six, seven. Looking for fives and sixes. Wow, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, that's four sixes, one five, so that's 
four criticals and one non-critical. Uh, so they, the Churchill is rolling nine against that. Four, six, eight, nine. Fives and sixes, he needs five of these at least. And he's got two. Uh, so he's got two fives and sixes. This is not looking good for this poor Churchill. Uh, so if the numbers are greater and it exceeds it by three, then the tank destroy the, the target tank is destroyed. Uh, if the fire achieves this by rolling more critical than ordinary dice, the tank explodes in a ball of flame, killing the crew, and the burning tank becomes a major obstacle. So game over for the Churchill. Uh, on unfortunately for him, he was he was pretty much on the on the uh, back foot pretty much through that, uh, but. That's basically how uh, what a tanker how it plays. I think that's pretty much covered most of the things in the rules. Um, short game, but it's supposed to be a short game. That's the point. Uh, a good fun beer and pretzels kind of game, just to play either after a big game or even uh, you can play the campaign version where you can increase the tanks that you're using as the game goes on. I just wanted to set something up just to really. To, to de demonstrate it. As I say, I've most likely made a lot of mistakes. I've probably most likely made a lot of tactical mistakes as well uh, with seasoned players uh, who are probably s screaming at me to get into the woods and things. But this is just really, like I say, to show you how the game works. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please do subscribe to the channel. I will at some point probably do more uh, Water Tanker games, uh, but there's also plenty of other after action reports of historical war games. Please do check those out. Give me a subscribe, give me a like, drop me a comment and uh, thanks for watching as always.